Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist, vestibular therapist, and coach, and I exclusively help people at this point in my career with medically unexplained chronic dizziness symptoms. On my channel, The Steady Coach, I provide tons of free educational and informational content to help people who are suffering from these conditions recover from them. But this video is intended for you, the healthcare professional who is trying to help someone who's suffering from a chronic medically unexplained dizziness condition. A little bit of background on me before we start. I have a doctor of audiology degree from Purdue University. I've practiced audiology in many different clinical settings, including hospitals, private clinics, and industry. And a few years ago, I grew frustrated with the conventional model of care that I was providing, through which I found I was simply unable to help these patients who are suffering from chronic dizziness disorders. So for the past several years, I've been working exclusively with people with these kinds of conditions using methodology that is based on the biopsychosocial model of disease, leaning very heavily on the psychosocial components of these conditions, which through my experience I have learned is the primary driver behind these symptoms. I'm certified in vestibular rehabilitation, concussion management, and advanced vestibular rehabilitation through the American Institute of Balance. I'm board certified through the American Board of Audiology. I've received extensive training in treatment methodologies that are being used currently for helping people with chronic medically unexplained conditions such as fibromyalgia and chronic pain, including emotional awareness and expression therapy and pain reprocessing therapy. And I'm an internal family systems practitioner. I'm also a certified strength coach and personal trainer. But beyond my formal training, the most instructive experiences that I've had have been my experiences with clients, both one-on-one -on -one and in groups. And more recently here on my YouTube channel, where I receive hundreds and thousands of comments from people who are suffering from chronic dizziness and who, if you look through my channel, you'll see are able to recover from these conditions following the methodologies that I share freely here. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what these conditions are, what they're commonly known as. I'm gonna talk about the general approach I take to helping people with them and why. And I'm gonna just give you some general tips on how to address clients like these or patients like these who walk in your door so that you can help treat that person more effectively. So chronic medically unexplained dizziness disorders encompass a wide variety of diagnoses, but what they all have in common is that they are based on the person's symptoms and generally cannot be quantified via laboratory or imaging testing. These diagnoses include persistent postural perceptual disorder or 3PD, Malda de Barkmont syndrome or MDDS, phobic postural vertigo or PPV or PPPV, chronic subjective dizziness or CSD, vestibular migraine, decompensated or long-term vestibular neuritis, chronic cases of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo for which no clinical signs of BPPV are present, and many cases of folks who were diagnosed with Meniere's disease without any clinical findings to support the diagnosis, when the diagnosis was made based on symptoms alone. What all of these folks have in common is they have clear physical symptoms relating to vestibular dysfunction that run the gamut from dizziness to unexplained episodes of vertigo to visual problems, visual sensitivity, 
postural sway, postural problems, neck tension and tightness, often headaches and migraines, the presence of strange symptoms when walking, and all sorts of other physical symptoms that don't really fit within a diagnosis. Now, of course, the most important thing we do as medical professionals or healthcare providers is to rule out a physical cause for the person's problems. But by the time a person is diagnosed with one of the aforementioned disorders, that person has usually been shown to have no physical abnormalities that explain the person's chronic condition, or that person was found to have some kind of physical abnormality that doesn't explain why the symptoms are chronic and not resolving with a course of vestibular rehabilitation therapy. Now, why does this happen? In general, I think about these disorders as a central sensitization problem, similar to our theories on fibromyalgia and chronic pain that's medically unexplained. These symptoms are occurring either because the brain is abnormally sensitized to normal sensation or because the brain's predictive coding mechanism has gone awry. Because the vestibular system is so complex, if the brain is making inaccurate predictions about sensory information, this can result in a myriad of symptoms related to all three senses associated with the balance system. Now, while admittedly the data, the scientific research on these conditions is inadequate, it is generally focused on finding biomarkers for these conditions, which don't really tell us a lot about the root cause. While it's been observed in fMRI studies that people with triple PD have changes in the function of certain parts of their brains, and it's been shown that people have unexplained postural sway or other physical symptoms when they have these reported symptoms, no literature to date has really been able to explain a root cause for these conditions. What I've found through my clinical work and also my learning and work with many, many clinicians who are working with people with similarly medically unexplained chronic conditions in related fields, stress seems to play an enormous role here in both causing the brain to become sensitized and causing the brain to create these predictive coding errors or brain prediction errors that are leading to physical symptoms. And the newer research on triple PD in particular is starting to show this, that CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy combined with the conventional treatments of vestibular rehab therapy and SSRIs or SNRIs creates a treatment that is actually a lot more effective. Additionally, there is a wealth of research on similarly medically unexplained chronic conditions such as fibromyalgia, chronic pain, and migraines that I will link to below if you're curious to learn more that shows just how intimately linked life stress is with the risk for developing one of these conditions. And at the time that I'm recording this video, I'm working on a research project that will be investigating this question, and I know of similar research that's going on right now as well. However, from my clinical experience, addressing these psychosocial components of this biopsychosocial condition is truly the path to helping people recover. And this can mean something as simple as helping that person understand that this is a simple brain adaptation and that brains can adapt out of it and there's nothing physically wrong or broken about the person to folks who have more complex histories who perhaps need psychological help or psychiatric treatment to help overcome earlier life experiences that were very difficult or traumatic. And if you want to know a little bit more about the methodologies I use, you're welcome to take a look around my YouTube channel or even to sign up for the course I created for people who are suffering from chronic dizziness. It is completely free and I will link to that in the video description. So some suggestions here, again, just based on my experience working with these clients for how you can help set that person up for success as that person recovers from this condition. The first one is for you to understand or at least leave some room for the belief that these conditions are both treatable and curable. My clients have often received very damaging messages from the 
of course, well-meaning healthcare professionals they've seen. Because these conditions are so highly psychosocial, the way that you explain and portray the condition to your client can completely change the trajectory of his or her recovery. And I've seen this in my practice. My clients who've arrived to me from neurologists, ENTs, or other healthcare providers who tell them that their conditions are treatable, get better and get better faster. Those who were told that they have an incurable chronic condition, that it's never gonna go away, that that person just has to get used to it, those people have a much harder time getting better because again, the mechanism that is keeping this thing going is stress. So please recognize that you allowing even a little bit of hope for that person to get better can tremendously reduce that person's fear and directly affect whether that person can recover or not. The second thing to think about is if you see someone who has one of these medically unexplained chronic dizziness conditions, think psychosocially. Once that person has had medical problems ruled out, ask that person, what was going on in your life at the time when the symptoms started? How stressful has your life been? What was your childhood like? Now, you may not consider yourself an expert in any of these topics, but just having some kind of understanding of what state that person's brain was in, how alert that person's nervous system was when the vestibular condition started, is going to tell you a lot about why that person's symptoms might have become chronic. And then portraying this to the client, conveying this to the client, and explaining that this stress that occurred before the vestibular condition can cause the nervous system to be in a hyper alert state and then make predictive coding errors can also tremendously help reduce the fear and stress that your client is experiencing. This is not just important to help soothe your client, it is actually part of the treatment for this disorder to help dispel some of the fear, worry, and anxiety about the symptoms. The third thing to think about is when you prescribe treatments for your client, please consider the entire biopsychosocial spectrum of this person's disorder. You may find that it's a good idea to prescribe some kind of medical support for the person, especially if he or she is in a lot of distress. But just having a conversation about the brain's ability to adapt and how psychosocial factors can affect neuroplasticity can be incredibly helpful in pointing your patient in the direction of addressing those psychosocial components of that person's disorder. And to help you, again, I will link to the free course below. Any patient is welcome to take it completely for free. It's humbling to me and honestly a bit daunting to put out a video like this when I know that I'm challenging the status quo on how conditions like these are managed but I have received numerous requests from clients, from people on my YouTube channel, and through other correspondence to create a video like this to help convey to other medical professionals and other healthcare providers my approach so that they can help support it. I really look forward to your questions below. You're welcome to leave comments there as well. And you can also reach out to me directly via my website if you have questions about a specific patient or you wanna learn more about my approach. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. I know how busy you must be and it means a lot to me and to the people who are being helped by my YouTube channel and the free course to know that people like you are trying to help them more effectively. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.